The year is 1931. Buick makes an all new engine configuration, but not just an engine configuration. It's an inline eight with overhead valves to replace its overhead valve six. For those that don't know, Buick was exclusively overhead valve after 1904 with the Model B. Buick would make the inline eight from 1931 to 1953. Overhead valve Buick inline eight was made in two block variants, the small block where the block measured 31.25 inches long, which could be had in the following displacements, 220, 230, 233, 235, 248, 263, 273, 278, 345. 3.6 to 5.6 liter displacement. Some of you may be sitting there wondering, wow, that is an eight cylinder and it has about the same displacement as an inline Chevy. And that was by design. The engineers wanted to make this engine look a lot like a Chevy six. The big block measured 34 and a half inches long and came in only one displacement size 320 cubic inch displacement or 5.2 liters that engine would replace the 344 in 1936 so let's go through the specs starting with the small block engines first and these are just roundabout figures bore stroke sizes may be rounded horsepower figures could change year to year it depends on a lot it depends on the tuning of the engine intake carburation the amount of carburetors used, timing. So these are baseline numbers. Buick offered three displacements right out of the gate in 1931. The 220, 273, and 344, starting with the 220. Side note, the single exhaust manifold used on the smaller engines was slash is prone to cracking without compact carburation. Early engines can be delicate. 220 cubic inch displacement in line overhead valve 8 3.6 liters it's good for 77 horsepower 3200 rpm 156 pound feet of torque at 1600 rpm bore of 2.875 inches and a stroke of 4.25 inches compression was 4.75 to 1 featured five main bearings two barrel marvel updraft carburetor this engine was found in the series 50 cars and it was only used in 1931 Moving on to the 273 cubic inch displacement, 4.5 liters. It was introduced in 1931 and lived until 1933. It was found in the Series 60 cars. It made 90 horsepower at 3,000 RPM, 200 pound-feet of torque at 1,600 RPM with a bore of 3 inches and a stroke of 4.6 inches. Compression was 4.63 to 1, 5 main bearings, cast iron. Used a two-barrel Marvel updraft carburetor. Moving on to the 230 cubic inch displacement, 3.8 liters. It was produced from 1932 to 1933. This engine replaced the 220 in 1932. This engine could be found in the series 50 cars. Horsepower was 86 horsepower, 3,200 RPM, bore of 2.9 inches, stroke of 4.25 inches, compression 4.63 to one, five main bearings, two barrel Marvel updraft carburetor. 235 cubic inch displacement, 3.9 liters. It was produced from 1934 to 1935. This replaced the 230 engine that came just before it. This was found in the Series 50 cars. It produced 88 horsepower, 3,200 RPM, with a bore of 2.9 inches and a stroke of 4.25 inches. Five main bearings. Compression was the same at 4.63 inches. This engine only made two horsepower over the outgoing 230. Side note, some innovation took place throughout the years. If I miss anything, please fill us in in the comment section below. In 1935 and after, the updraft carburetors were traded for the downdraft carburetors, and downdraft carburetors were used from 1935 until the discontinuation of this engine design. 1936 introduced analyte aluminum pistons. Strongberg replaced Marvel as the carburetor supplier. 1937 was a huge year for Buick. Buick goes from poured bearings slash Babbitt type bearings to a more replaceable kind. Aluminum rocker arm shaft brackets to provide a quieter valve train experience. Streamlined intake valves and revised oil pump. Bu Buick Century officially clocked 103 miles per hour. 1938, dome tubular pistons, which improved combustion, increasing compression. 1940, larger, more reliable oil pump introduced, improved radiator. 1941, 10 millimeter spark plugs also implemented PVC positive 
crankcase ventilation, which helped with vapor lock issues. For those that don't know, these used automatic choke, and if there was a vapor lock issue, there wasn't a way to really control it or correct it. And that's why a lot of people added a manual choke. I mean, who doesn't like a manual choke? Who doesn't like to have control over that issue if it ever persists? 1951 would see the release of the hydraulic lifters. 278 cubic inch displacement, 4.6 liters, could be had in the Series 60 cars, was made from 1934 to 1935, produced 100 horsepower, 3200 RPM, with a bore of 3 inches and a stroke of 4.6 inches, 5 main bearings, 233, 3.8 liters. It could be found in the Series 40 between the years of 1934 and 1936. It made 93 horsepower, 3200 RPM, 183 pound-feet of torque at 1900 RPM. Which brings us to the 248, which was one of Buick's bread and butter engines, 4.1 liters. It was produced from 1937 to 1950, originally in the big series cars, and then it became the bread and butter for the lower end cars, like the Special and the Super. It produced 110 horsepower, 3600 RPM, 206 pound-feet of torque at 2000 RPM, compression 6.3 to 1, 5 main bearings. Side note, with this engine being produced from 1937 and up, it uses the replaceable bearings. 263 cubic inch displacement, 4.3 liters. It replaced the 248 in 1950 and was produced from 1950 to 1953. Could be found in the Special and Super line. It produced 120 horsepower at 3,600 RPM, 215 pound-feet of torque at 2,000 RPM with a bore of 3.1 inches, a stroke of 4.1 inches. Which leads us to the biggest displacement engine on offer. 344 cubic inch displacement, 5.6 liters. It was produced from 1931 to 1935. It was found in the big series cars such as the 80 series, 90 series. Side note, before 1933, it uses a single piece manifold. After 1933, it uses a three piece manifold. The craziest thing of all to consider is this is the biggest displacement out of the smallest block that they had. Could make anywhere between 104 to 116 horsepower, 2800 RPM, 250 pound feet of torque at 1400 RPM with a bore of 3.3 inches and a stroke of 5 inches. Compression was 4.5 to 1, 5 main bearings. Let's talk big block, 320 cubic inch displacement, 5.2 liters. This engine was on offer from 1936 to 1952. It was replaced with the 322 nail head in 53 in the bigger car. This engine could make up to 168 horsepower, 3200 RPM, 238 pound feet of torque at 1600 RPM with a bore of 3.4 inches and a stroke of 4.3 inches. Five main bearings built of cast iron. This is the engine that everybody thinks about when they think of overhead valve Buick in line eight. On the positive side, well, actually, let's talk reasons for discontinuation. This engine wasn't a huge powerhouse of an engine per se. Yes, it was powerful. You could get up to 168 horsepower at the high end, and yes, you could get more out of them. I've read stories of people who would hot rod this engine in the 60s, but this engine also had a decent sized footprint, so you would need a really long hood space to fit this engine in. This engine's like almost three foot long without anything attached to it, add a radiator and a transmission, and then you're dealing with a lot of space. The straight eight design itself puts a lot of strain on a, such a long crankshaft. If they had more main bearings, it wouldn't flex and strain the crankshaft as much. Five main bearings is eh, it's adequate, I guess. Seven would have been better. Nash made one with nine main bearings on a straight eight. Just think of how sturdy that would have been. With nine crankshaft bearings, that thing's not going anywhere. By the early 50s, straight eights were looking very old fashioned. Buick wasn't the last one to give up the straight eight. That award goes to both Packard and Pontiac, which gave up their straight eights in 1955. The V8 was the bee's knees and everybody wanted a V8 and the V8 engine configuration took up less space and made more power than the inline eight, which caused the inline eight to kind of go by the wayside. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather, and these engines may or may not be from the same time period. 1940, Hudson 8, 254 cubic inch displacement, 4.2, makes 128 horsepower. Or 1940, Buick, 320 cubic inch displacement, in line, overhead valve 8, 5.2 liters, it's good for 141 horsepower. Or 1935, 
Hotmobile, 303 cubic inch displacement, flathead in line eight, 4.9 liters. It's good for 115 brake horsepower. Or 1940 Packard 282 flathead in line 8, 4.6 liters. It's good for 120 horsepower. Or completely out of left field, 1932 Nash 260 cubic inch displacement overhead valve in line 8 produces 100 horsepower, but get this, 9 main bearings. I'm going to leave these here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. Also, if you have any experience with these engines, please share your experience in the comment section below. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to give both the name of the band and song title. First person to do both correctly will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. I will admit that one is a bit chopped. Anyway, if you'd like to get in touch with me, uh, shoot me a comment in the comment section below or check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. If you don't have Facebook and would like to reach me, send me an email. All of that will be linked in the description below. Just know I appreciate all of the support. And until next time, toodaloo!